Okay, we're going with this. <laughs> but it catches in the chair, guys, so it's a winner. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know, my name's Lucy, and I'm a PhD student who likes to travel, can't really afford to travel at the moment, that's a whole nother issue. We're in a new location, again. I'm still trying to work out like what the best filming location is. It has been a while since I've done a sit down video. I am slowly making my way through all the Central European vlogs that I took in September. So I will put a link to the playlist in this corner. So I'm a PhD student, as I mentioned. I'm at the University of Birmingham and I'm about three months into my PhD. I'm actually going home for Christmas tomorrow. I'm so excited, I love Christmas. But I thought that would make this a great opportunity to kind of talk you through the expectations versus the reality of doing a PhD from someone who's about three months in. So I kind of got the lay of the land now. I'm going to switch it up into four categories. Workload, friendships, PhD life and money. Because I think those are kind of the big sweeping categories that will affect most people when they do a PhD. Workload, expectations. Before I started the PhD, I kind of wrongly assumed that A, you would start writing because, you know, you've got to come out of this PhD with like 100,000 words and you're kind of like, oh my God, that's going to take ages. I've only ever written like 20,000 before probably for your master's PhD, possibly even less, 15,000. And now you're being expected to write 100,000. It's a lot. So you kind of expect you're going to get going straight away. You kind of think you're going to immediately get into the library. You're going to be doing loads of researching. You're going to be writing. It's going to be like no to the grind 24 seven. It's not quite the case. Not really the case at all, actually. I would say your workload kind of goes like this you're gonna have moments where you are really busy. When you're kind of working to a deadline, be that a funding deadline, be that a conference application, an abstract, whether it's an internal deadline you've kind of set yourself where you've said, I want to read these 10 books by the end of the week because that will really set me up well for blah, 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 blah. But then you're gonna have down periods as well. You're gonna have days where you don't feel like you do a lot or where you like, you do a lot of admin stuff. And this is why I didn't expect the workload of the PhD. Most of the stuff you do day in, day out is very non-research writing focused. It'll be networking. It'll be sending that email to that person, making sure you're signed up for that conference, making sure you're touching base and going to that workshop, identifying kind of gaps that you need to address. If you're applying for funding, you're gonna spend a lot of time on funding applications, particularly when you start, because you're not gonna be used to how they work. So there's a whole, other thing you have to do outside of the PhD, and I'm mainly talking from someone who wants to go into academia, just to clarify, like my end goal if I get there is to go into academia. So for me in particular, there's so much around the PhD that I need to do to kind of get to that end end goal. So I need to be going to conferences, I need to be networking with people, I need to be thinking about the wider community I'm hoping to become part of. So because of that, I have to do things I like go to conferences or give presentations or join the Ad Alta peer review group. So there's all this kind of stuff that I need to do, which doesn't contribute to my final PhD, but it's just as important. And I think that's the thing you don't realize, but because of that, you are gonna have ups and downs. You're gonna have days where you do a lot, or even weeks where you do a lot, and then you're gonna have weeks where you don't do that much, or you don't feel like you're doing that much. Because at the end of the day, you're not superhuman. You're not going to be able to just do everything all at the same time. You're gonna to have to prioritize week by week or day by day, however it works for you. And also it's human, we're not, we're not meant to go like this. Progress is like this. Sometimes you're gonna hit a research stumbling block and you're gonna to have to rethink, or you're gonna discover something and it's gonna completely change how you're gonna approach it. And that might require a load of new research, which could set you back, but actually it's helping you move forward. The workload is quite different from what I expected because I didn't expect all the surrounding stuff, friendships or friends or making friends. So my expectations for this were pretty low. This is my third time around, I'm 26, I've already got a pretty good group of friends, to be honest. Not bragging, but they're pretty great. So I didn't come into the PhD expecting to make loads of friends. I thought, oh, maybe I'll make one or two. I've had loads of people say PhDs can be really lonely. So I had really low expectations. I remember telling my friends who dropped me off, well, if I don't make any friends, I'll just be coming to see you guys all the time for the next three years. So my expectations on the floor really didn't think I would make any friends, and if I did, I didn't think they would be good friends. I was wrong, quite nicely wrong. The reality of making friends in the PhD is I personally found it fairly easy. That is not the case for everybody. I would like to highlight, I am just giving you my perspective. Most of the friends I talk to now on a fairly 
regular basis I met during Freshers Week so I highly recommend as a PhD student please go to Freshers Week. Put yourself out there, go to the events, whether you think they're interesting, whether you just think it's an environment where you will make friends, be that a coffee morning, be that a campus tour, that's where I met most of my friends weirdly. So you have to put yourself out there. I pretty much in Freshers Week was out of the house every day. That doesn't mean I was going out getting drunk but it just meant I was going to at least one or two social things a day just to try and meet people, to build those connections. And if you meet someone you get on with, be like, hey, do you want to add me on Facebook? Hey, do you want to uh, follow me on Instagram? Just have some way to communicate with them because this is kind of the one week where everyone's in the same boat. So you want to take advantage of the fact that if you message someone after only meeting them one time, they're most likely going to say yes if you ask to hang out because they ain't got any friends either. So please go to Freshers Week, put yourself out there, ask some people on Facebook and then follow them up. If you met someone who you think was really cool and you really had a good time with and you were laughing and joking and you're like, hey, I can see myself being friends with that person, send them a message two days later being like, hey, are you going to this event? It looks really fun. Do you want to come with? Even if you don't become friends with that person, you might at that event have more confidence because you're like, oh, I already know this person, they're cool, so I'll talk to this person. Don't skip Freshers Week, especially international students. Please, please, please don't skip Freshers Week because that really is the time to meet people and kind of make friends. That's when I met I'd say 90% of my friends. So I suppose the reality was I actually found it easier to make friends than I thought it would. And part of that I think was because I did force myself to be out of the house in that first week a lot, kind of the first two weeks. And also just because I think being 26, I've got more confident in who I am. And I was just kind of very, you like me or you don't, that's kind of on you, I like me. And I realise that's not the case for everybody, but I think that's partly what helped me make friends, just because I'm at a stage of life now where I feel a bit more confident in who I am. And yeah, there are still days where it can be lonely, because everyone's got their own lives, they're doing their own things, but overall, it's pretty good. So that brings me to, quite nicely, the next point, which I think is the most ambiguous. I've called it PhD life, and it's kind of all the things you're gonna do at the university that maybe aren't directly related to your PhD, but you're still kind of on campus for them. So as part of this, I'm talking about my job on the student team. I'm talking about any kind of workshops I've gone to. Even if I've just like met up with people for kind of, oh, we're doing similar to like PhD topics. Do you wanna meet for a drink? My expectations for this <laughs> were zero because I didn't realise this was a thing. <laughs> I thought I was just gonna come and sit in the library for three years. I was wrong. PhD life is quite important, and I think it's something you need to be aware of when you go in, that you wanna get involved with your department, definitely, your college if you can, and even the wider community. Be that through joining societies that are quite friendly and welcoming to PhD students, and I'll be doing a blog post on that soon, so keep your eyes out, or whether it's getting involved in an academic reading group, or you're setting up a something. There's so many things you can join. So there's academic reading groups, and obviously this is from a very much English PhD perspective. There's academic reading groups, there's magazines you can join to help like edit, or peer review, or write for, there are you know, regular lecture things that are happening for P PGRs particularly. There's loads of stuff at Westmere, which is the University of Birmingham kind of PGR, postgraduate researcher hub. There's always events going on and just go to them. You will sometimes be surprised. Sometimes they're awful. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Sometimes they are awful and you're like, why did I waste an hour coming here? But other times they're pretty good and you'll meet people in your chat and you'll hear about their research and you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. So there's so many things you can get involved with that I think it's really important in your first kind of month just find out where these things are i found that quite tricky you might have to subscribe to some mailing list you might have to talk to a certain person find out where they are kind of put them in your calendar you're not committing to going but at least then you know you know you get closer to the time and you have a free afternoon and you know there's you know maybe a Chris a festive christmas event happening at westmere you can just go along it's free food most of the time so i would recommend going along the reading groups are also really fun. I have only been to one, Gothica, and then I'm setting up one in January, so that will be quite exciting. Another kind of aspect of PhD life that I thought about but I didn't really know if it was possible is I'm currently auditing. I audited this term two PGT classes and the next time I'm auditing, I think it actually might be a third year undergrad module. But the reason I'm auditing them is because they will help me with my research, they provide me with greater context, they just give me good base, make sure I've got that good base some of my topics. Base, I feel like I've said that word too many times now. Base, base, base. It's all about that base, about that base. 
Anyway, yeah, so you might end up auditing some modules and that actually is a really great way to meet people through your classes. They won't be PGRs, or they're very unlikely to be, but you'll have something in common with them. You've all picked all at the same modules. You might end up making some quite good friends and you'd, all your friends don't need to be PhD students. Let's just clarify that. They do not all need to be PhD students to be your friend. One of my actual closest friends is a master's student and she's lovely and we met at a workshop of all places. Who would have expected that? <laughs> So that's what I mean by PhD life. My expectations were zero because I didn't realise it was a thing. And now it's probably one of the better aspects of it because it's a way to like meet people and keep in touch and kind of expand your research in ways you wouldn't expect. The final one I was a bit hesitant to talk about, but it's money. I feel like, especially British people, we don't like talking about money, but I think it needs to be discussed. I'm not gonna get into the details of money, but basically my expectations was that, oh, I'll be fine. I've got savings. I'm gonna have two part-time jobs. I know how to budget. Yeah, I didn't 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 know how to budget. Didn't didn't have a clue. Forgot one aspect of being a student again is you eat out a lot, you tend to be with your friends a lot, you tend to spend money without thinking about it if you go on a night out, and you don't have money coming in regularly. So it's pretty hard to budget when you have no income. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you're still gonna go down, even if you budget really carefully you're still gonna lose money at the end of the day. You're gonna be spending money that you're not recuperating. My expectations for money was that I would be fine. The reality, I'm pretty broke right now. And it's partly because one of my part-time jobs took a long time to pay me. I'm hoping I will get paid soon. In theory, I think I get paid today. The money situation, I think long-term is gonna work itself out. I'm still applying for funding. There are options open to me, but I think I was a bit naive when I went in and I thought I could live off less than I can. The reality is you're gonna to have to be paying for food. You're gonna be going out and meeting people. Even if it's just for a coffee, that's a fiver. You're gonna to need to be getting around. You might be going home some weekends. You also are gonna have rent and bills potentially to pay, depending on your situation. You might also have to be paying your tuition fees, depending on your situation. So just be realistic with the money you are gonna be spending. Don't be like me and be like, oh yeah, no, I'll only spend like a tenner on going out a week because I'm gonna just not go out. No, if you get talking to people, you're gonna wanna go out because you're gonna wanna make friends. There are obviously cheaper ways you can do this and I am by no means an expert, but just realistically think about your money situation and work out in advance ways to do it. You can totally do it. I'm doing an unfunded PhD, I'm making it work, but don't go in it naive like I did. It doesn't help anyone. You're just gonna come down with a crash and probably call your dad crying, being like, dad, I can't afford to buy groceries. And then he's gonna send you a food package. So yeah, 26 guys, I'm adulting real well. That's kind of why I wanted to talk about money because I think we don't talk about it, but maybe we should. And just the situation is that like things with funding, if you get funding, that's great. If you don't get funding, you can still do a PhD, but you just need to be a lot more aware of the realities of how much money you're going to want to be spending. I think that's everything. That's kind of my first three months expectation versus reality. The reality is better in a lot of ways. My research has changed a lot since I first started. It's gone in new avenues, it's gone in new directions. I've done a lot more around the research. I've made more friends than I thought I would. I haven't done so well on the money front, I'll grant you that, but I'm making it work, I'm applying funding, I've got two part-time jobs, I'm hustling. I'd love to hear how you found the reality of doing a PhD compared to what you expected it to be like. So leave me a comment below and I will love to hear from you. I don't normally ask for comments, so this feels weird, but I'm trying to get better at that thing. <laughs> okay, this is Lucy signing out, and I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. Bye. I think my cactus is dying. I'm trying so hard to keep it alive, but its leaves are molting like crazy. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm not watering it very often. Am I not watering it enough? I don't want to overwater it because I know that's a big killer. I'm watering it like, I'm trying to water it like once every two weeks, and I use a spray bottle, so I don't even overwater it, but maybe I'm not watering it enough. Anyway, not important for this video.